my first mental health day the other day. I always thought that that was a, a thing for weird people. Wobble the and, <laughs> and those who can't handle the stress of life. And I learned, no, that's a day for me. Um, the challenge is going to be for me not to declare every day a mental <laughs> <life>. <laughs> Uh, we uh, we closed down early on Thursday. Uh, this bad week, right? It was costing us more money to stay open than what it was that we were, than what we were bringing in. And um, I just I just hit my I just hit my breaking point as far as dealing with folks. Um, some of you can understand that. Some of you that work in the public, work with people, even, even if you're, um, I, I guess all of us have to deal with people, don't we? Yes. Um, for, for me, the, uh, the rush to talk to the preacher from October 1st through December 31st, that, that's my busiest time. Everybody's got to talk to me or visit with me or lay all their worries at, on me during that time. And I know that. So I'm normally sick the two weeks after that because I just get worn out. Well, this year, that didn't happen. It didn't stop. I'm continuing to filter everybody's issues. I'm glad to do that. I, I love visiting with people, and um, I, I love walking around Sandusky, and you know what, I, t I, I, had, I took a mental health day to get away from the cafe and, and those, in that atmosphere, that, that type of situation, and I drove over to Sandusky, and it was, you know, it was snowing here really bad, and there was ice here, but I got north just a little ways, and there was no snow, and there was no ice, and I'm like, hey, James, you want to go to Sandusky? I don't know if I want to go to Sandusky or not, he says. I said, okay, and I ignored him, and I kept driving. <laughs> <laughs> and That's and we, fatherhood. I, I know, right? <laughs> and we got over there, and I found, I found a whole different set of people that needed the preacher. And over there, there's several different stores that I go in over there. They just, they call me the preacher. And, or just preacher. I'm like, that's good. You know, they don't have to call me Dan. They don't have to, even though I did write on my skateboard when I was about knee high to a grasshopper, Dr. D, because that was the nickname that I wanted when I got to be older. And now that I'm older and I, I have the doctor in front of my name, nobody calls me Dr. D, and that's okay. I, I, get, I just I do it in my mind. How's it going? But I, you know, I go over and I visit with people, and they are so excited to see the preacher over there. Just some of them are just giddy to see the preacher, starved for attention, that release of emotion that they need. Have y'all ever been there? You just need to just need to vent to somebody. You just need to bend somebody's ear for a little while. Somebody that's not going to judge you. They're not going to. They're not going to give you advice. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm surprised our dog hasn't moved out. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't judge you. She vents to her dog. Oh, so. You know what I'm visiting with these with these people, and they're and they're, they're telling me different things about their lives, and you know I'm trying to encourage them and lift them up a little bit. I realize that you know what in the book of Revelation it says that even though we go through trials, and that's plural, multiple trials, even though we have hurdles to get over in our life. And God helps us to get over those. We still don't turn to Him 
for encouragement, for advice, for an uplifting, for, for his blessing. Lots of people, they just don't, they just don't do that. And I got, you know, we're in chapter 9 here in the book of Revelation. We're at the second woe. And all of the things that have happened so far, the, the people still are not turning to God. And you know what? If they can go through all of this, why would I think that just, just minor problems that people go through today would cause them to turn to God? You know, we started out with the seals and all the things that happened with the, with the seals, the white horse came and was conquering and conquered. And remember, we said the seals were already open, and so we've been through all of this. And you know what? There's part of this that I think is still going on and still continuing, part of the seals that's still continuing. And it's there's part of the um, fourth seal that... I didn't emphasize that I just kind of floated over until the time was right. And the time is right now. And it says, And he opened the fourth seal, and I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death. And Hades followed him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth, by the plagues. This seal is still going on. And we see it around ourselves all the time, don't we? We see people struggling with, with everyday life. We see them struggling with sickness, with cancer, with with um, the COVID virus, with all the other things. People have uh, diabetes, and they have heart disease. And did you know that not even 5%, right around 5% of today's children qualify for the military? Yes, that's how sick we are. And that's what's included in this seal, is this sickness that comes upon us. And so we see people dying every day, and there's no wonder. Now, now that I understand it, now that my eyes are open and I see what's going on, I can see why people need the preacher all the time. Because they can't vent to family members, because family members are going through the exact same thing, aren't they? So, hey, I need the preacher. i got to talk to the i got to, i got to, Release the anxiety that I have. I'm like, okay, it's good. Just go smoke some weed and you, it'll be all better. <laughs> no, that's not my recommendation, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Definitely not. The world's population right now is 7.9 billion. The U.S. population is 300 and 30 million. One quarter, so if we round up a little bit, we're at 8 billion people. And during this seal being opened, 2 billion people die. And catch this, we're saying that the seals are open right now, we're, we're, we're going through all of this stuff to lead up to the tribulation, so we see people dying all around us, don't we? And God has called each and every one of us His followers, and if we're His followers, we're also ministers for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we're ministers for the Lord Jesus Christ, each and every one of us should be bending an ear or listening <coughs> or caring for those that aren't followers, those that need help, those that need to talk. The problem is, 
Not even the other preachers out there right now are doing that. They're hiding in their offices. They're hiding in their caves, so to speak. Because they don't want to, they don't want to put up with all that's going on. Well, you know what? When two, when two billion people are dead from all the sickness that's, that's upon us, we'll know we're really close. How many people died from the COVID so far, so their numbers say? 900,000 in the United States? Hmm? We do. But that's 10%, that's 10 well, that's 5% of the 2 billion that have to die. And that's just in the past couple of years. The seal's been open for quite some time. How many people have died uh, from their sicknesses, from not taking care of their bodies? From not eating your veggies? That's a real thing. And the devil has come out in full force. And I, I know I've said this before, and I've got to say it again. The devil's come out in full force. And you see his face on the Cheeto package? And the Twinkie package? Captain Crunch could just, Lord's like, really? That's what I'd like. <laughs> Captain Crunch could be the devil himself. He just draw little horns on him. I mean, why not? That stuff's not food. Lord, you know that stuff's not food, right? You know how devastating that was when they stopped making Twinkies for that couple years? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for you, there's a whole stash someplace that's probably 50 or 60 years old that are still edible. Oh, you yeah. just peel them open and start eating them. They're going to taste the same as that three-year-old McDonald's french fry that's on the floorboard of your truck. I'll help you I, I know, I know, we're, we're there. Um, I, I sat down and I had some pretzels and some chip dip yesterday. And I'm thinking, you know, that, 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 there's no food here. This isn't real. This is what, this is what the devil's using to, to sicken our bodies, to pollute ourselves. I'm going to move on. I'm going to get on that soapbox. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know what my favorite snack is? Black and white hers. No, that's not my favorite snack. That may be my favorite food, but not my favorite snack. Jake? Pretzels and onion dip. No. That's not. <laughs> my favorite snack in the whole world are olives. Black or green? I don't care. Olives. They're either one is just as bad. I buy, I buy the big <laughs> jar of olives, and Char's like, I don't have room in the fridge. That's too bad. Throw some of that stuff out. My olives need to go in the fridge. Because I will scoop out a bowl, and while I'm watching TV, I'm eating olives. It's winter, just stick them outside. Huh? It's winter, just stick them outside. We do. That's olive abuse. <laughs> you know what happens? To olives when you put them outside. No, they freeze. They freeze. <laughs> and then it's like eating eyeballs. No, that's, <laughs> they kind of pop in your mouth a little bit. Uh huh. And then my other, my second favorite snack food are the little tiny, um, I, I don't know, baby beets. <coughs> I love beets. The little red beets. Beets. Do you know what a beet is? It's a root vegetable. It's a root vegetable, you know what? And, it, and if you if you go and use the restroom and your poop sticks to the bottom of the toilet, you're not eating enough vegetables. So your butt will love you if you eat vegetables. Come straight from the preacher. I say that at the cafe all the time. And then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star, a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit. We already read that. And I'm going on this one. And the locusts. And then the sixth seal sounded. So we've got the bottomless pit open. And we've got 
A quarter of the population are already dead by the time this happens. So, two billion people dead because of our choices, basically. Um, because remember, the seals were man-made problems, not God-made problems. And now this is what God does to us. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the fourth horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who have been prepared for the hour and the day and the month and the year were released to kill a third of mankind. Okay, so if there was 8 billion, we killed 2 billion off um, from all of our food and our medicines that we have and everything else that's supposed to um, sustain life, but it doesn't. That's the great uh, deceiver, and he's deceived us as to what's good for us. We've got 2 billion dead, and now we're going to kill another third, so 6 billion um, there's going to be, there's six billion left, we're going to kill a third of six billion, which is another two billion people, right? From this, from this, um, uh, trumpet alone, and I heard a voice from the fourth, for the, voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had a trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great Euphrates river, so the Four angels who have been prepared for the hour and the day and the month and the year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red. Um, Hyacinth. Hyacinth, thank you. Blue? I didn't know that was a color. That's kind of cool, though. The sulfur yellow and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. And by these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and their tails, and their tails are like serpents having heads with them they do harm, but the rest of mankind who did not, who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of their works of their hands, and they should not, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk, and they did not repent in their murders, their sorceries, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. So. We have, in this, in this end time, we have the pit is open and all these creatures are coming up out of the pits and they're killing people, uh, they're hurting people, and they're wanting to die. And remember, two weeks ago we talked about how they were trying to kill themselves and they couldn't kill themselves, so then we had a whole lot of discussion on whether if they shot themselves in the face, they would just be walking around faceless, or if uh, the gun wouldn't go off because the Bible says that they would seek death, but they would not be able to find death. So we have the proverbial zombie walking around. And so all of that is still going on. We still have these demons that are on the earth. They're flying around and they're torturing people. All of those who don't have the seal of God, the mark of God. And now we have this. And these angels that are being held at the four corners of the, of, of the river Euphrates, and they are chained in place. Hmm, that's interesting. Because we had talked about all of the fallen angels that God had locked up in the pit. And now these fallen angels are, are these demon-like creatures that are coming up. And remember, fallen angels aren't demons. Demons are the Nephilim. They're the offspring of the fallen angels and, and human women. So those are the demons. Those are what floats around and scares you at night when you see 
um, strange faces and all of that. And the angels that fell, God locked them up in the pit. And this last trumpet, God had sent Satan, um, who still has access to God's throne, can still talk to God because God has to give him permission to do his do his work. He gave Satan the key to unlock the pit. All these angels, all these angels come out and they're terrifying creatures in there. And God still has uh, dominion over them, tells them that they can't kill people, they can only hurt people. And so now we have four angels that are chained to the Euphrates River, and these angels are commanders of angel armies. And God says that he has prepared them for the hour, the day, the month, and the year to, um, and they were released to kill a third of mankind. So God has these angels tied up for a specific time. And their armies are numerous. It gives a number here. And I, I was looking up to find some value in the number to see if it's just a, a real number, if they really counted them all. Did John actually sit there and count every one of them? Or did he hear the number? And it says, now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million, and I heard the number of them. So he heard the number of the army. Or did he just hear that there was a mass amount of horses and soldiers? Most scholars believe that the number just stands for innumerable. Because we know that the amount of angels that came out of the pit were innumerable. And the uh, number of people that are saved are innumerable. The number of people that are sealed by God are innumerable. And so we should expect that this number should be innumerable, innumerable too. It just means he's not going to count them all. There's too many to count. And so the horses, with the angels on the horses, come to kill. Notice that the demons, the demons, the offspring of the watcher angels and women, human women, they're they're not they're not around. I wonder what happened to them. Because if they're they're the scary little demons that uh, that that bother us. Ever had a demon bother you? Yeah? I was, I did, did an exorcism last week at a building. Um, they had on video um, a toilet seat lid, you know, from the back of the toilet seat. It was set on the, on the sink. And I'm watching the video, and it looked like somebody grabbed the back of it and went, and it flipped into the air and fell on the ground and broke. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> and there was a bag of something on the shelf. And I'm watching the video, and this gal walks by. She's at least three or four feet from it, not even close to it, couldn't even reach it if she tried. And the bag, which had been sitting there on the shelf for months, fell off right at her feet. So it, was, it, was, it didn't just fall, you know, sometimes when things fall off, they fall straight down. Like that, right? This didn't fall straight down. This fell over here. Kind of like it was slapped off or thrown off. Those little demons like to bother us, don't they? Rest assured that they have no power over us. That... The Holy Spirit lives within those that are sealed by God, and they can't bother us. <coughs> they can't.
can, however, be in a place um, and do certain things. And uh, but when we get to the end times here, they're 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 not even really on the scene. They're gone. Or there's so much evil that we don't even notice those little things. I think it's bless you. I think it's interesting. What? You're scared of everything that got let out. <laughs> Yeah, they're scared of the angels. They would be subordinate to the angels. It'd be like their parents, parents, right? Yeah. Mommy and daddy's home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And let's let's go on to this. We have these three plagues: fire, smoke, and brimstone. And we don't have any. We don't have any uh, elaboration on what these three plagues are. They're just labeled as fire, smoke, and brimstone. So whatever it is that's coming out of the, the uh, horse's mouths and the, and the tails from the, from the uh, horse. Oh, we got, I don't even, I couldn't even see that picture. Isn't that cool? Well, yeah, so we, oh my goodness, look at that guy. <laughs> Looks like something you see on the side of a 70s van. <laughs> okay. You, you remember all that a little bit? I don't. <laughs> I'm sure my mom doesn't even. <laughs> you do got a point there. There was a lot of weird stuff here. So these plagues kill off two billion people. And here's the point of today. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by the plagues, did not repent of their works. So we already have, from the fourth seal, we have two billion dead. And from the sixth trumpet, we have two billion dead. We have four billion, half the population of the world today is dead. And they still won't turn to God. And the the people still will not turn to God. We've got a lot of bridges to build, don't we? But remember, it doesn't matter how good of a Christian witness you are, how much talking you can do, we can't force anybody into choosing God. They have to choose, them, choose God themselves. And there's going to be lots of people who don't want to have anything to do with God. So I know that all the, all the stuff that's going on with me, all the visiting that I'm doing, and all, the, all the listening that I'm doing, it, it may be not any good. It may be that that person is still not going to accept God. But we still have to try, don't we? We still have to be a true follower. And we still have to reach out to those around us that need help. And there's all kinds of them. So even though we've got all this coming, my challenge to you is to, is to reach out to those that are around you. And I, I have given this challenge I don't know how many times. Befriend your neighbor, those that you run into at the grocery store all the time. Start talking to them. Build the bridges in hopes that they won't have to go through all of this and that they will get the seal of God. So next week we're going to cover this in a little, more, little bit more detail. I wanted to hit on the, um, the rest of mankind that today. So next week we're going to reveal some more stuff out of this that's probably going to blow your mind, but um, for today I'm going to call it quits there and I'm going to take a few questions. So if you have any questions for me about what we've covered so far, I would love to field those. Jane? Um, you said that the death broke the pale for us and Hades followed. 
Is Hades the devil? Or what is Hades in? Um, Hades is the, the, the dwelling place of those who die. So the whole, like, dwelling place followed. So, like... No, it doesn't mean the following behind. It means it's a series of events. You die, and then you go to Hades. Oh, okay. Yeah, because those that died didn't have, weren't sealed. They didn't have the, the sealing. So that's their dwelling place is Hades, unfortunately. Any other question? Oh my God, all this, and I've answered everything. Did, did the exorcism of the house work? Um, as far as we know, yes. I've heard that a lot of times it's not the house, it's the people that are inside it that are followed. Okay. Um, in this in this instance, it's the it's the building that they tend to hang out in. I don't know why. So um, I've had I've done several. Matter of fact, in the past in the past ten years, I've I've had the blast or exercise several different dwelling places, um, but in the in the past two years, that has the number has grown exponentially. I mean, to almost that I'm at like two or three a month now. So, demon activity is definitely increasing. Um, and no, they're not. That, that's not grandma and grandpa hanging out watching over you. Um, just so you know, your loved ones that have passed away are in their resting place. They are not floating around um, eating your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So, Jamie. Um, where is the river Euphrates? The river Euphrates. It's over in the Middle East. Where? What? Oh, let's see. It's a, it's a real river. It's a real river. Yeah. 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 Southwest across Syria and through Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. Longest river in Southwest Asia. Yeah. All right, I have a question. Yes. It says that people weren't turning to God, even after all that. Is it possible that now, when people have all these little troubles and they just feel like they got nowhere to turn but to God, is that God giving us the opportunity to increase faith by putting your wall back against the wall and you got nowhere else to turn? Absolutely. That's how the Holy Spirit calls. Most, a lot of times, that's how the Holy Spirit calls us to Him. It is by putting us through troubles. And you've got nowhere else to go. Yep. And that's people in situations go, God, if you get me out of this. Exactly. Yeah. But notice, most people, when they when they say that, they don't they really go, mean it. You know what? I'm a, I'm a MASH fan. You guys know that. <laughs> and I love to use illustrations from MASH. Radar was bitten by a dog, and over in Korea, the, the biggest thing was rabies, all right? So he was taking the rabies shots, and he had to have so many shots in his stomach, yada, 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 it was making him really sick, and he had one little moment, he's like, um, he's like, okay, God, no more, no more hell's dams, or, you know, yeah. or even the big one. Yeah, I remember that. Um, uh, a few episodes later, there he is. Yeah, and a few episodes later, he's he's using the same words, oh, you know, that he promised, if you get me out of this, and, and miraculously, a, a couple of minutes later, they found the dog, and the dog didn't have rabies, so he didn't even have to finish his his round of shots. So I, I'm sure that the, the writer of the show didn't want to give God any credit for that, but if you look at it, well, okay, so he made, he made a promise to God, God came through, and now he's back, you know, reneging on his promise. How often do we do that? How often does... Yeah, but does God it, doesn't make deals. He either does it or he doesn't. He just, God does what God does. He true. doesn't make deals. True. He does He's not Monty Hall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
But he still puts us through, puts us through things so that we we'll, have to turn to him. Yeah, so that we turn to him, and so that we'll. A lot of times, if we don't, if, even as a believer, if we don't call on God on a regular basis, if we don't seek after um, His guidance and, and His blessings, He'll put us through things so that because He's kind of jealous. He's a jealous. Just reminds guy. us of who we are and where our place is. Yeah, yeah. He wants us to communicate with Him. You know, he wants us to love on him. He wants us to follow him. And, uh, sure. Are there any other questions? I'll take one more. James? Um, with the horse locusts like thing are meant to torture people, are the other ones meant to kill? Yes. They're, okay. given, they're given authority to kill um, one third of the Earth's population. Okay, I was just trying yep. to... And, and we noticed people. that... They're both angels, right? And, and they're both different types of angels, which tells us that God's made angels for different purposes. Yes? Now, with, with that, the locusts were uh, sent there to do harm to the ones that did not carry the soul. Now, this one does not reference you're not saved by the soul, so it could be one-third of the people that are still followers. Well, it, it could be, but we catch, we catch from the... Um, of verse 20, but the rest of mankind who were not killed by the plagues did not repent. So what it means is that those who were killed needed to repent. Okay. So he's still protecting those who have the seal. Absolutely. Good question. <laughs> John's like, whoo! John's that bullet. <laughs> But he keeps giving you chances and chances and chances. You can change, you can change, you can change. Right. Right. Will you right. change? The choice is still yours. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right. We're good. Um, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you so much for the scripture that you've given us. Lord, that we know the, uh, the end of the story. You know, we can we can study here and we can see all the things that are going to happen and we know that it's true and that that, uh, that you're gonna that you're gonna uh, unleash all of this evil on the earth um, because people won't turn to you Lord, we just ask that uh, you help us to to have faith in you and, and to continually worship you and pray to you and and put put all of our uh, cares and our worries at your feet. Father, we, uh, we thank you for helping us get through this week, and we pray that you help us get through the next, and that, uh, that as you challenge us, we will meet those challenges um, using the Word of God, using the uh, tools that you've given us to win the day. Lord, we pray that you watch over all those that are here today, that you will give them blessings and mercies. Watch over us as we go home. Let us enjoy the rest of this Lord's Day um, in rest and prepare for the next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
over us, keep us safe, and pour your blessings out on us. Go in peace. Amen.